Okay. <laughs> Doing the double check. Yes, spin. double check, triple check. You know, head to today we have a live studio audience. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure that I triple check everything. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Yes, how are you guys today? It's Wednesday. We're live. We're excited to be here. And by golly, our top story today is what do the experts see on the horizon for the remainder of 2021? You know, there's a couple things. The interest rates are still at record low. I mean, just crazy low interest rates. Inventory continues to be very tight, even though it is increasing to a year ago. But those numbers are hard to track since a year ago, May, we were basically shut down here in California in April, so it slowed down the closings in May. And so this year it's just coming roaring back. The numbers are like spiked, like hockey sticks. Um, but it's not really a fair comparison to May of last year. <laughs> it is not. May of last year we were under the lockdowns. Of course we were. And the mortgage rates, you know, I always find it, I guess, semi-ironic that there are still arms, adjustable rate mortgages, on the market and the reason I say that is interest rates are historically low I mean how low can they go we're looking at between 3% maybe 2.9 to 3.1 or 2% I mean what are they going to do go to zero so you're going to get an arm and hoping they go down I would fully recommend you know, we're not mortgage brokers but we deal with them every single day that if at all possible get a fixed rate what do you say? Well, 110% get a fixed rate with <laughs> record low rates. He just got off the phone with, with a client, is why he's even talking about this, who was talking to him about an adjustable rate mortgage. I'm like, what? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it just seems to make sense to me that if it's possible and you're buying a conforming loan, which, you know, within the loan limits and all the parameters, that you should definitely get a fixed rate because from here, in our humble opinion, rates can only go up. Now, when we're talking going up, we're not talking jumping up to historic rates of 6%. Doesn't that sound historic like Historic rates, <laughs> like 18% like they were. Well, yes, that, that was only for a brief amount of time. And people were still buying houses then. Mm -hmm. But we're talking rates will probably, and this is based on the experts, go up between 35 to 4%. So if we're at 4%, we're still basically pretty low. Right, and they're still not even saying by the end of 2022, which is next, the end of next year, that they still won't be at 4 So we'll see. I mean, I don't know where they got their crystal ball, but that's what they're saying. And a lot of times, it seems like when the experts start talking like that, especially when you're talking the head people at a lot of different global corporations, their crystal ball seem to be spot on. They do. Yeah, I don't know. Somehow. Maybe they, maybe they should manipulate the market to match their forecast. I don't would, know. Who knows? They wouldn't do that. Oh, no. Of course they wouldn't do that. Uh, second thing is home price appreciation has been robust in the first half of the year, and it's expected to stay that way just based on the demand and the inventory. National averages, and this takes all the financial experts average, they expect it to go up another 8.9%, um, so almost 9 percent in the next year so it's actually they're encouraging home buyers to get into a home right now if you can find one because they are still going prices going up well and they're looking at 8.9 percent let's round it up to nine percent but i think there's areas definitely pockets in the market that are going to see double digit what's that from nine to ten percent i would say in the 20 percent range mm -hmm. so depending on where you buy at the right time at the right place that you're going to see large gaps as far as if the average is 9% and you bought in a place that seems to be very hot. We've heard about Margaritaville in Florida where they're sold out at maybe a year to over a year out in advance. You know, those kind of places, retirement places, communities, I think we're going to see some very large jumps in the prices in those particular markets. And it's market by market, city by city, basically these days street by street yeah i said i didn't write these statistics down but they were talking about breaking down the market on who is selling based on age range and about 25 percent was under 45 
and then 22% in the next bracket, but really who's selling is the super seniors, which they, they consider over 65 as a super senior, and they have a lot of equity. They have a lot of income, equity, assets, just based on how the money has rolled down from generations, and they are looking to make some moves now. That's right. The seniors, anybody over 50, I think that's when you start getting the discounts at McDonald's. And then, <laughs> <laughs> then over 65 is the super senior. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but those are the categories mm -hmm. that uh, we're talking about. So the super seniors are the bulk of, of the market, and those are people that are downsizing, changing locations changing floor plans where through the lockdown they were like, this really isn't working for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we see. Yeah. And the super se uh, seniors, they really, it's not really about price for them. I think a lot of them are overwhelmed. They're in these big homes they've been in for 40 years. They've raised their kids and now they have so much stuff in there. They don't even know where to start. So if you're one of those people, call us. We're happy to walk through and give you some help and some pointers. We have all the resources to make that task as easy as we possibly can so you can move on to your next chapter in a smaller home. That's right. We don't go and say, hey, start right here. We'll go room by room and actually help you. Lisa's an accredited stager, and we'll help you make a list. Now, where you actually start on that list is ultimately <laughs> going to be you. <laughs> and it seems like to us, ultimately, most of that stuff ends up starting in the garage. So they take it out of this room, put it in the garage, and then the garage is the final staging point, whether it goes to your local charity or sometimes goes to storage for an extended period of stay. Yeah, I have a secret for you. Your kids don't want your stuff. <laughs> Newsflash, they don't want it. And we have, that's just how it wor wor works out. You keep it in the house and then you don't want to get rid of it till you because your kids are going to want it. I can promise you, your kids don't want it. <laughs> yeah, the stuff they want, they're going to tell you that while you're alive. Right. They're not going to pull the dumpster up while you're still there. As soon as you leave, here comes the dumpster. That's what happens to your stuff. We do it all the time. Yes, so, we do. So anyway, CoreLogic just um, came out with their <laughs> was that um, we, uh, equity <laughs> insights re report. We, we got a little sideways down that rabbit hole. Yes, we do. And I have some numbers I thought were really Interesting. Now, these are national averages. The average equity gain of a mortgage home in the past year is $33,000, and that's nationwide. Um, the current average equity of a mortgage home is greater than $216,000. There was a 6% increase in total homeowner equity in the past year, and U.S. homeowner equity has reached nearly $1.9 billion. It's that's a record T. amount. That's T. Trillion. Trillion. $1.9 Trillion, that, that's still a difficult number to say. That's why I just skipped right you know, over that. Trillion, no yeah. you read that. But then I also went down these states because they, they broke it down on the, gra on the graphic by states. So California is where we are. The, uh, the average equity gain is $70,000 in California. Arizona, $51,000. Uh, Texas, $19,000. Florida, $26,000. And Idaho, which has lower prices than California does, Average equity up 71000 so more than here, which I thought was shocking. But those are all the places where people from California are moving. <laughs> they are, yes, all those places. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a lot of people from California are definitely headed to Idaho. So yes. Idaho, open your arms and welcome the Californians coming in. Yeah, evidently they are not welcoming we, people that have moved there. <laughs> they change their California place as fast as they can. <laughs> yeah, where are you from? Local. <laughs> <laughs> so existing home owners are sitting on record equity and it has more than doubled in the past decade. So people that have um, doubled their equity in their home, they're thinking about buying up, buying down, buying a second home, buying their kids a home, buying a vacation home. There's all kinds of things that people want to do with that equity. So if you want to talk about that, call us. Let's talk about it. We love to talk about equity. These days, it seems like, you know, short sales are such a thing of a decade ago, but everybody's got equity, and what are you going to do with the equity? I think the only way, really, to discuss equity or what you're going to do with it is if you're prepared to sell, because if you stay where you are, it really doesn't matter if the home prices shoot up 200% or go down 50%, because if you're there and it's your home and you've got a fixed rate mortgage and your expenses are fixed, it's your home, okay? 
Yeah, but it's much more fun to talk about equity than it is to talk about short sale. Those were not fun co uh, conversations. Oh, I don't even know why I brought that up. It's I don't just, either. <laughs> it's just a dichotomy in the market, you know, if we're going to talk, you know. The equity market versus the short sell market. The short sell market just seems... It's not right now. So, again, well, I'll touch on that while he brought it up about forbearance. Um, they did extend the... the uh, Supreme Court extended the tenant rights that you can't evict them now for another, I think, month or six weeks. Uh, but the forbearance, we have not seen that here. I mean, they say there's X amount of homes in forbearance nationally. But like I just said, these people have equity. So it's not going to be this big short sale foreclosure situation that it was, you know, in 2009 and 10. It's not going to be. The market no. is totally different. Mm -hmm. And it seems like in the past several years, every time something happens in the market, it's something new and completely different that we haven't seen before, nor did we foresee it happening. Right? Yes. But we keep our hands and our fingers on the pulse of the market every single day. We look at homes and prices. So, if you have a question or a concern, what do they do? Give us a call or visit us at GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks, guys.